Are we what? Are we? Are we? Are we human? Or are we are, dancers? Or are we Tony dancers? Tony dancers? Yeah, haven't you heard that famous Elton John song, Tony Danza? <laughs> Hold me closer, Tony Danza. No. The joke is that it's actually Hold Me Closer, Tiny Dancer. Oh. <laughs> but everybody thinks he's saying Tony Danza. He wasn't? I mean, he might have been. Elton John is all-knowing. He's retiring. Sad. Did you know? Um, I have a lot of things going on. <laughs> Shaking my head like Cher on stage. I used to be really good at singing one part of Do You Believe in Life After Love. Should I do it? Probably not. <coughs> that sounded really good. <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> Jeff thinks I'm a bad singer. Hello, and welcome to another episode Bonjour. of Tudor. I, I hardly, hardly know, know her. her. I'm Jeffrey. And I am Emily. And this is No Garrett. Garrett, it's a Garrettless week because Garrett's probably still hungover from his epic birthday celebrations. I'm just kidding. He uh, is just unavailable tonight. So you get the 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 sweet sultry, soothing voice of Jeff the and Emily. Sultry sounds of Jeff sorry if Simpson. I can't talk as deep and as well as Garrett. I mean, you know what? I'm sorry that you don't talk like H. John Benjamin. I think everyone in the world should feel sorry they don't sound like H. John Benjamin. I think H. John Benjamin is sad that he just sounds like H. He doesn't sound like H. John Benjamin. I think he's just sad because he has like the voice of an angel, but like the face of a homeless man. <laughs> <laughs> Poor H. John Benjamin. What do you think the H sounds for, stands for? Henry. Homeless. Hank. Harold. His name is Harold. Harold. My name is Harold Benjamin. Uh, Hugh. He could be a Hugh. I bet you Wikipedia could tell us. Nah, I'm too lazy. Um, funny story. When I started researching tonight, I had no clue what topic I was gonna research, and you knew that as well. But while you were in the office putting songs on your iPod, you started playing the Mario theme, <laughs> and it's like the the rushing Mario theme where he's I think it's the one where he's got a star. So yeah, it was that one, and. I felt a lot of pressure to choose an episode right then and there. <laughs> so, so about playing the Mario theme, especially <laughs> when it gets like near the end where it's like ill and has to speed up. Yeah, you run out of time. You like you feel even more anxious. Yeah, guys, that sometimes helps with sex. In case you're looking to spice up your sex life, play the Mario theme. Do 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 do. Don't actually do that, you guys. You'll ruin your marriages. Or um, prove them. You don't know until you try. Oh, God. Can you imagine just like some super nerd who's married to a not nerd? And the super mer- nerd goes to the not nerd. I was like, hey, I want to try something in the bedroom tonight. And the not nerd is like, ooh, I'm interested. And the super nerd just turns on the Mario music. <laughs> Um, you want to know what we're going to chat about today? I mean, it'd be kind of nice to know what our subject is well, going to be. Well, too bad. I'm going to, um, no, I'm not going to talk this episode. I want to purvey the information via clairvoyance. So we're going to spend 40 minutes. We're actually going to do a, 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 a game of charades on this podcast. <laughs> At home playing. Guess our, what Emily's doing right now? <laughs> our special co-host is Marcel Marceau. Welcome, no. Marcel. <laughs> no, we are no. Today we are going to talk about one of Henry the Eighth's um, courtiers, Thomas Howard, the Third Duke of Norfolk. Oh, not what I thought it was going to be. What do you think it was going to be? I thought it was going to be a female. You brought. <laughs> I, for reason that courtier just sounded like a female thing. Courtier. Courtier. So it sounded like a woman You might be thing. thinking of the word courtesan. Is that the cream you put on when you have an itch? That's calamine. No, courtesan. <laughs> <laughs> huh. 
Um, no, a courtier is somebody who just chills at the courts. A courtesan is, uh, I think it's, I think it's a, a an official role. It's no. like a mistress. And, an um, official hooker. Calamine, hooker is not an appropriate word to use. Mm-hmm. It is sex worker now. Oh, sorry. You should be. Time's up, Jeff. Um, <laughs> love you. And. And um, Calamine, you put on your itchy spots when you have smallpox. Or not smallpox. Please don't get smallpox. Chicken pox. <laughs> um, no, we're going to chat about uh, Thomas Howard. So you, I've mentioned him before. He is the uncle to two of Henry's queens, Anne Boleyn and Catherine Howard. So are you ready? Yeah. Are you ready to rumble? Yeah, I guess. You ready? Okay. Okay. So Thomas was born as the eldest son, which automatically helped. So I've mentioned this before, but just to reiterate, it was really good to be the eldest. Additional sons were like insurance policies, <laughs> but then they ended up getting fucked over when they lived to adulthood. They they were they were SOL because they didn't really get anything. The eldest son got everything. Oh, I know how that feels. Oh, Jeff, blah. your middle child syndrome is showing. Yeah. I'm going to tell your mom you said that. So I have an older brother, so he got to be the first son. And I have a younger sister who got to be the only daughter. And so I'm just there. Uh, you're the funny one. Funny to look at. No. Everybody mm. tell Jeff he's handsome. Do, 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 do. So his brother was Edmund Howard, and his sister was Elizabeth Howard. So... Edmund was the father of Catherine, of Catherine Howard, and um, he ended up not having a, a good old time financially, and some of his kids had to go live with um, his stepmother because he just couldn't afford them. And his sister Elizabeth was the mother. His sister Elizabeth was the mother, mo- mother, mother of Anne Boleyn. So. SOL if you're not the eldest, whatever. So his father was Thomas Howard, another fucking Thomas, the second Duke of Norfolk. So same fucking name, same fucking title. That's not confusing at all. It kept things convenient. I know. I I don't want to learn another name. Just name this one Thomas. It's like those monogram towels. It's just easier not to change them. (laughs) Um, So uh, his mother was Elizabeth Tilney, and that was his first Thomas Howard the second Duke of Norfolk's first wife. And he was born in 1473. And from the female, from his female lineage, he was descended from King Edward I. So he was probably a douchebag who walked around thinking he was entitled to everything. I mean, probably. Unfortunately, his father and his grandfather fought for Richard III. Fucking Richard III. Which didn't turn out well didn't turn out well well at all and uh then our buddy hank the seventh came along and so they all lost their titles because they fought for the enemy and i wrote so many fucking thomases for some reason because there's been a lot of time i mean there has i just don't know why i wrote it right (laughs) there so they he served as a soldier oh this is why it's because they were like Thomas Howard then served as a soldier. And I'm like, which fucking Thomas Howard, <laughs> you bastard? Um, so he was a pretty baller soldier, um, although he was under the command of his father. And his dad knighted him, which there was probably no favoritism at all happening right there. Um, but he was knighted September 30th, 1497. Now, remember, he was born in 1473. I tried to do the math, and at first I was like, he was 14 years old? What the fuck? And then I redid the math, and I'm like, oh, wait, he's 24. <laughs> so I'm bad at math, guys. That's why I'm into history and English. Um, luckily, when Henry VIII became a king, he decided that he wanted to um, make Thomas Howard the Younger's leg a little sexier and put a garter on it, and he <laughs> made him a Knight of the Garter. And for like a hot moment, they were best friends. I bet you that's where the tradition of the garter for women comes from at their wedding. Actually, do you want to know where that tradition comes from? 
it used to be good luck to tear a pe- off a piece of the bride's gown and brides would end up like almost completely naked because people would be tearing at their gowns. I'm just visualizing the scene in Cinderella right now. Very like just very at, at a wedding. <laughs> probable. So that's where the garter comes from. Okay, so interesting fact. <coughs> okay. Everybody's related. <laughs> <laughs> no shit back then. Okay, wait, I forgot to tell you. So the how ha- okay. The Thomas Howard we're talking about, his brother was the m- father of Catherine Howard. His sister was the mother of Anne Boleyn. And his first cousin was the mother of Jane Seymour. Yeah, I, I didn't know that last keep tidbit. Keep it in the family. I know, right? Got to keep that incest alive. <laughs> okay, so Howard or Thomas Howard the Younger, the one we were talking about, he married Anne of York. She was one of the daughters of Edward, not Edward the Seventh. Edward the Fourth. Why did I write seven? She was the daughter of Edward the Fourth, and in 1484 they were betrothed, and so he married a fucking princess, which is pretty cool. So that was when Henry the Seventh was still king, and so Anne Howard, Mary, or was in in the service of her sister Elizabeth of York, the Queen, um, and they married in 1494, 95. So they were they were betrothed pretty fucking young. Like they were, he was nine. No, fucking eleven. Why am I? S- <laughs> why am I so bad at math? You're struggling today. I'm so bad at <laughs> math. Um, and then they married in 1495. So he was just 18 years old. But I mean, that's not that's not too bad actually for that time period. Mm-hmm. Um, but then because the universe hated women, she died in 1511. Um, not sure how she died because this is not the Anne of York episode. They had four children, although none of them survived to adulthood. Don't worry though, because two years later he married Elizabeth, Lady Elizabeth Stratford. Stafford, not Stratford. That's Stratford upon Avon, where Henry or where Shakespeare's from. Stafford. She was the daughter of the Duke of Buckingham. The Duke of Buckingham. Uh, his sister was the wife of Edward the Fourth, and then I just wrote Jesus Christ. <laughs> That's seriously Jesus Christ. Um, yes. So lots of yes. Okay, so his sister was the wife of Elizabeth of Edward the Fourth, Elizabeth Woodville. Henry okay. Henry's Henry the. I know. I God. know. I know. These family trees. Or just a convoluted They're mess. so complicated. I'll draw this. Actually, I'll draw this one out and post it. So they had three children. Henry, the Earl of Surrey, who was executed January 19th, 1547. Nine fucking days before Henry VIII was killed. Or died. Henry VIII wasn't killed. This is not revisionist history. He died. <laughs> Plot Taking twist. some, <laughs> some Plot liberty. twist. Some author liberty there. Fake news. Um, he had a son, Thomas Howard, who was created a Viscount by Queen Elizabeth. And then Mary Howard, who married Henry VIII's bastard son, Henry Fitzroy. So the Howards were doing okay. And They're he may have had a daughter. Place. Yeah, I know. He may have had a daughter who was Catherine Howard, but not the Queen Catherine Howard. Um, but at that point, his, his dad wasn't a Duke yet. So this is around 15. This is right. This is like 15 teens. Um, he was just the Earl of Surrey, but in 1514, Henry was like, yeah, here's a Duke dumb. And he became the Duke of, his dad became the Duke of Norfolk. So Thomas took his father's title of Earl of Surrey. Um, or no, he was created the Earl of Surrey on that day. So Henry was just like, I like you guys take the shit. I don't, you have this land, have these titles, be my besties. So he kind of did the king's bidding, escorted his sister to France to marry Louis, stopped a riot in London. Um, t- typical stuff. I wrote he sounds like General Hux from <laughs> the new Star Wars movies. Just a bitch. Just just a bitch. I mean, he kind of is. R- listen to this and, and hear the General Hux in some of his duties. <laughs> Does that make Henry VIII Snoke? Because I don't think Henry VIII is Snoke. No. Um, He'd be Kylo. Just 
angry mm. all the time, frustrated. Yes. Um, and then Snoke would be Wolsey. Yeah. This is an old. Let's man go with Wolsey. You just like you <laughs> <huge> child. <laughs> So in 1520, he was given the sucky job of putting Ireland to order. And Ireland was always just doing their own shit and disregarding Henry. So he had that unfortunate job. Um, he didn't last long for it. Apparently, he was a, a job. What, what do they call people who, who just go from job to job really quickly? A career jumper? Something like Some, that. Something super condescending to millennials. But fuck you, old people. Give us jobs that are good. Um, if, if Henry or if uh, Thomas Howard can job jump, so can I. Except right now, I like my job. So he, after a year, he was no longer doing the Ireland gig, and he took command of the English fleet against France. And because it was Henry the Eighth, and he hated, they all hated France. Uh, they went to they went to war, naval war, but. Howard didn't really do anything besides just do coastal raids, so didn't really do much. So he was just kind of an average courtier for the beginning of his life. And then he became the Lord Treasurer in 1522. It was a job his dad had had, and then he got it. Um, so he got lots of money. He ended up as the third highest ranking office. It's the third highest ranking office of the state, but he didn't get along really well with Woolsey. Which I don't think he got along well with. You know what? He didn't get along well with anybody. <laughs> and I will tell you why in just one hot minute. Um, But he didn't get along with Woolsey because Howard really liked war. And Woolsey just wanted some fucking peace and quiet. So Woolsey did what he did best and made sure that Howard was pushed out in a way and no longer important. So he was kind of balling for five years. But then Woolsey succeeded in pushing him out and so he disappeared from court for a year or two just to like there's probably some drama that was not recorded in history and he went to the countryside where he treated his wife like fucking garbage um so <clears throat> he oh but then i wrote his nieces got laid and he got paid <laughs> so uh he was with the the Boleyns and the Duke of Suffolk, who was Charles Brandon, they were kind of running the country. Like, they were all Henry's buddies, and Henry was like, yeah, I just want a divorce so I can have a baby. Just, you do you. Um, and they all were kind of worked together to get Wolsey ousted. So, when Wolsey was arrested for treason and then died... Howard actually became the king's leading counselor and he worked really hard for him to get the divorce. Um, not as hard as others. Well, I don't know. That's probably not accurate or fair to say, but he did work hard for the divorce, obviously, because his niece would become queen and then he'd be in power and it'd be great. So he was given a lot of monastic lands and those were the lands that were taken from the monasteries when Henry was like, no more monasteries. I want their money. Give me that land. And he was also given another knighthood because apparently he could he needed to wear like he, when I picture a knighthood I actually picture that like suit of armor, like the traditional knight image. Oh yeah. So I'm just imagining multiple knighthoods with like stacked suits of armor. Everyone's just walking in with a whole like clanking armor. <laughs> <laughs> um, and he also was made Earl Marshal of England. Don't know what that is. So then he was made Lord High Steward. And unfortunately, when Anne Boleyn fell, not unfortunately for him, he was in the role of Lord High Steward presiding over her trial. So mm -hmm. he convicted her of treason and sent her to the block. I mean, he had to do what Henry VIII wanted, but also, fuck you, man. And then he also fucked up at home. So when he and Elizabeth married, they'd actually cared for one another at first. And then he fucking took a mistress in 1527 and not only did he have a mistress he moved the mistress in with him and his wife because <laughs> he's a big old bitch um and then elizabeth formally separated from him in the 1530s and she said that the duke quote locked me up in a chamber and took away my jewels and apparel and he also probably beat her so she was moved to redbourne and she was literally living as a fucking prisoner. So he's human garbage. And we definitely needed some feminism back in the 1500s. 
So Henry was still, or Howard was still Henry's stooge. And he worked towards ending the pilgrimage of the grace. He was the one who promised the rebels a pardon and said he would make sure Parliament addressed their problems. Then went away for a minute. And then pilgrimage of the grace two, boogie nights happened and they came back. And so they all went to brutal fucking deaths. And that was bad for them, but good for Howard. But then there was another issue. So fucking Cromwell was in power. And fucking Cromwell really wanted some serious reformation because at this point, Henry VIII was just making a Catholic state under his rule. He wanted the money to go to him, not not to the Pope. And he wanted Mm -hmm. to be able to make all the decisions, not the Pope. But everything else, he was pretty fucking Catholic. And Cromwell was kind of mm, not really undermining Henry, but doing his own thing and be like, just trust me, Henry, I got this. But he was making a very um, almost Lutheran state. Howard was not cool with that. He was a conservative. He'd profited off of, off of the changes made, but he couldn't agree to completely changing his religion. So there was this thing called the Six Articles. And in the 1540s, like I, I either like 1539 or 1540, something like that, the six articles were presented by Howard and they were conservative doctrine added into Henry's religion. Mm-hmm. So it was against Cromwell, pro-conservative, hooray. Cromwell wasn't too served about it. Um, and it, uh, in fact, Cromwell and Norfolk were enemies and so Norfolk was going to do everything he could to get him arrested. So I'm just going to straight up read from Wikipedia. That's my source, guys. On June 29th of 1539, Norfolk, the Duke of Suffolk, Charles Brandon, and Thomas Cromwell dined with King Henry VIII as guests of Archbishop Thomas Cranmer. During a heated discussion about Cardinal Wolsey, Cromwell charged Norfolk with disloyalty and Norfolk called Cromwell a liar. Their mutual hostility was now out in the open. Cromwell inadvertently played in Norfolk's hand by taking the initiative in the king's marriage to Anne of Cleves. The king's disillusionment with Anne's physical appearance, she wasn't a horse, when he met her in 1540, and his desire to have the marriage annulled after the wedding had taken place, gave Norfolk an opportunity to bring down his enemy. On June 10th, 1540, Cromwell was arrested, arrested at a privy meeting on charges of high treason. And Norfolk personally tore the St. George net from his neck. There wasn't like a guy hanging. It was a medal. Um, so he definitely got his revenge. So <laughs> then Henry married his other niece, Norfolk's other niece, on the same day Cromwell was executed. So I'm just picturing Cromwell or uh, Norfolk bringing Henry to his family reunions. <laughs> And being like, this one's single, and this one's single, and that one's husband is about to die, and that one's single, and this one's kind of hot, and that one's probably a slut, so... You probably had that one. <laughs> <laughs> There's just, like, Anne Boleyn's body bad. <laughs> so, um, once again, because his niece was queen again, he profited, and he got more powerful. <laughs> But then that didn't last very long because Catherine had her affair and the Howards were in in serious trouble. They were accused of concealing the affair, which was fucking treason. And it was so bad that Catherine's step-grandmother, who is Howard's stepmother, the Dowager Countess, who is an old lady, was brought to prison and she was in a lot of fucking trouble too. I was visualizing the old lady from Game of Thrones. Yes, Lady picture Tyrell. Elena Martell. Oh, Elena Tyrell. Tyrell, not Martell. Yeah, just this like smart ass woman. Yeah. Um. <laughs> somehow Thomas Howard weaselled his way out of it. Oh wait, so I'm sorry. I meant to say the entire Howard family, but Thomas was in trouble. He somehow <laughs> weaselled his way out of it and was it was in favor and all that stuff. He got more appointments. He was named Lieutenant Dan. <laughs> just kidding, <laughs> Lieutenant General North of River Trent. And Captain General in a Scottish campaign of 1542. So he, so 
then in 1543, apparently he was able to just be like, my king doesn't like you. I declare war. And so he was just able to just fucking declare a war on Henry's <laughs> name. That's power. War was declared. War was declared this night. What's that quote from? What's that bad quote from Lord of the Rings? A red sky. Oh, a, a red, red dawn. moon. Blood has been spilt this night. No, it's a red dawn, right? A red dawn. Something like that. Red Blood sun. Blood has been spilled. I'm imagining Howard saying, I declare war, like in exactly that weird voice. So then, because Henry hated the French, he went to war with them again. And Henry was fighting in Bologna, one of the cities, not Bologna, Bologna. I thought you had an illness. I do. <laughs> he's fine. He's fine. This terrible Bologna he's had in his, his throat. <laughs> his entire week. I've got this chest Bologna. It's so bad. <laughs> And um, Howard was in, I, ugh, this is a French word even, I can't pronounce, Montreux, Montreux? Usually with French words, I just stop Trail halfway. Uh, that's <laughs> kind of what I'm doing. <laughs> M-O-N-T-R-E-U-I-L. I think it's Montreux. But, sure. um, so he was supposed to, so Henry got Bologna, and Howard was supposed to hold both of the cities, but then, like, he was just like, eh. I'm going to go home. I don't really feel like it. <laughs> kind of. I'm tired. He claimed he didn't have enough enough sor- resources to contain, to keep the cities, but he just, he just wanted to go home. And Henry was pissed. <laughs> I'm tired now. I want to go home. <laughs> he, Henry was pissed, but like it wasn't that big of a deal. So then Catherine Parr became the queen, and she was um, a more, she was a more, more for the reformation she wanted more more change religiously and so was edward seymour and he was the brother of boring jane seymour and they were both politically influential edward because he was the uncle of Ed, the, the king and Catherine because she was the king the current king's wife it's it's all so fun <laughs> and not confusing at all um but Howard wasn't in good shape politically, so he tried making a um, uh, 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 an alliance with Edward Seymour and Catherine Parr. So he wanted to marry his daughter, Mary, to Thomas Seymour. He was the guy who shot Edward, Prince Edward's dog oh. when he was king. The day of kidnapping. Yeah. And he also loved Catherine Parr, and he tried to marry Elizabeth. Thomas Seymour was just all kinds of messy. Um, but Howard was going to try and marry him to his daughter. Didn't work out because his eldest son, the Earl of Surrey, three Earls of Surrey in this episode so far. Oh, my God. This one's name is Henry, though. Henry <laughs> Howard. Original. <laughs> he had assumed the royal arms of Edward the Confessor as part of his heraldry, so like his badge. And that was huge no-no. Big, big bad no-no. <laughs> um, so both Surrey and his father were arrested, and they were sent to the tower in December of 1546. Um, January rolls around a couple weeks later, and it's 1547. Howard acknowledged that he had, quote, concealed high treason in keeping secret the false acts of my son, Henry, Earl of Surrey, and using the arms of St. Edward the Confessor, which pertains only to kings. And he offered all of his lands to Henry. So the the, the symbol of Edward the Confessor, Mm -hmm. only the kings were allowed to use it. Hmm. So the Earl of Surrey, in an attempt to make himself pompous, or he doesn't make himself, to make himself seem cooler than he was... He took those arms, which was essentially saying, I'm king now. So big, bad, no, no. His entire family was like, yeah, Henry or uh, Thomas Howard fucking sucks. (laughs) They all gave evidence against him, including the wife he abused, his daughter, and the mistress he moved in with the wife. Oh, my God. Uh, So payback's the bitch. Yeah. Then on January 27th in 1547... Norfolk was attainted by statute without trial, meaning he was convicted of treason without a trial. They just, Henry signed a thing and he said, yes, he's guilty. (laughs) And as he was dying, Henry VIII was like, yeah, kill this bitch. (laughs) 
On January 28th, Henry died the next day. <laughs> Thomas Howard was going to be executed on the 28th, and then Henry died. <laughs> so he was saved just by sheer fucking luck. And the council was like, well, we probably shouldn't start a new reign by killing someone. So let's just he's, just keep him in the tower. We, can, we don't want to make, make Queen Mary look bad by having no, someone no, no. killed. Edward. Or, Oh, right, Edward. Yeah. Let's, let's, let's save him for Mary. <laughs> <laughs> well, actually, it's funny you say that because he stayed in the, in the tower throughout Edward the, the sixth reign, Henry's son. But when Queen Mary came back, she was like, well, he is a conservative and his family's old Catholic. So you're out. Your treason is void. So you get your, your name back and you get your lands back. And I want you on my privy council. He also made him the Lord High Steward. So he oversaw trials again. He was named Earl Marshall again, and he served as the Earl Marshall, Earl Marshall in Mary's coronation. So things are going great for him during Mary's coronation. <laughs> things are looking up. Yeah. Um, he didn't last too much longer, though. He died on August 25th, 1544, and I'm not sure what he died from. A broken heart. <laughs> of, of not having more money and stuff like that. Not weaseling myself in enough. On, on the notebook I gave you, there are two book titles. Can you read those? No, no. I want, I want you to read them. <laughs> <laughs> I'll read the, the second one first. There's The Fifth Queen. That's a book I just I, I saw a reference to, and I want to read it. But then the one she's referred to is The Man on a Donkey. That is an interesting book title. So those are apparently supposed to feature. I don't think they're about Howard, but they're supposed so to feature it. in it. And that's it. What? Yeah, I'm kind of curious what the hell this title is referencing to. Yeah, I, lo- I saw The Man on a Donkey. Oh, it looks old as shit. A powerful novel of England during the reign of Henry VIII, when the king's men despoil the monasteries and divide the wealth among the royal favorites, rebellion begins to brew in the north, and for a few weeks the leader held the fate of the nation in his hands. Oh, so it's about the it's about the pilgrimage of the grace. Oh. Boogie nights. <laughs> uh that is it for Tommy. Tommy boy. Whoa, weasel. He's such a douche canoe. <laughs> such a douche canoe. I Pina just like sucks. all just like random happenstance just being related to everything. Just like oh my just, god! Just I give know. an excuse to stick around. I, I, I don't have a pen right here, otherwise I'd try and write the tree without looking it up. It's <laughs> so confusing. So Thomas Howard had a brother and a sister. I mean, he had. I think there were thirteen altogether, but of those thirteen. He had a brother and a sister, and his sister was the mother of Anne Boleyn, and his brother was the father of Catherine Howard, and so then his cousin, who would probably be his father's sister, father's sister's daughter, or no, father, yeah, father's sister's daughter, or mother's sis- or mother's okay. sister's daughter. Yeah. <laughs> I know. This is really messed I know. up. Conv- but his cousin, just think of a cousin, <laughs> was the mother of Jane Seymour. Okay. So Anne Boleyn and Jane Seymour were related. And so were Catherine Howard and Jane Seymour. But they were like second cousins. Ka- Anne Boleyn and Jane... <laughs> <laughs> Anne Boleyn and Catherine Howard were first cousins. Because their parents were siblings. Okay. Jane Seymour was like their second cousin. Because their parents' parents were siblings or something like that. Okay. I know. <laughs> I know. I I only recently started understanding the second cousins once removed bullshit. Yeah, I still never understood Actually, it. Actually, I think they are second cousins. Once, uh, once removed is referring to a generation. Okay. So I have a cousin who has a baby. That baby is my first cousin once removed. Okay. So when that baby has a baby, that'll be my first cousin twice removed. Okay. Got it? And then second cousin is like 
generate is like so like technically i have second cousins it's my dad's cousin's children your dad's cousins are your second cousins and their children are your second cousins once removed okay because <laughs> uh, like i don't have cousins at all no which is always like weird to think about like how many people i know who are like i have this cousin they're like i don't have any i have a million yeah <laughs> i have none hey guys jeff and i want to talk about our ideal casting of the movie clue <laughs> <laughs> we wrote this, it down i just don't have this it. was a very serious thing for us jeff and i once spent a whole night talking about if they redid the movie clue who would we cast in what roles and it came up even more. Like, we already did this before, but then the news came up recently about Ryan Reynolds doing a Clue movie. And that's yep. what brought this up for us today. Yeah. <laughs> we just got, like, really excited because we were just talking about, like, all our Dreamcast. And I it, mean, we don't think our Dreamcast is going to be in it. Who was our, it? Our Sega Dreamcast. Um, Our Sega Dreamcast. Damn it. Garrett's not here to enjoy that joke. I understood it. I yeah. got that joke. Oh, I, I'm, I'm not saying you did it. I'm just saying he's not here to also enjoy it. Oh, hold on. Let me do a Garrett impersonation. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> no, here's a Garrett impersonation. Beep. I don't get it. Beep. Oh, that chirping in the background. Beep. I should just put that in. You know he's not here. I should put <laughs> it just so our... Garrett just so our, our our listeners, listeners are like, like are just so used to it now they're like they're, they're like what's wrong what's wrong with this episode something's missing <laughs> oh it's the obnoxious <laughs> chirpy in the back all day oh, okay I that's it, it for lot. that's it for tommy boy and and the howard <laughs> tommy and the howards is that was is to- tommy boy is tommy it, boy and the howards is he being played by chris farley <laughs> No, Chris Farley is probably nice. Thomas Howard's a douche canoe. Mm-hmm. Nope, that's it. So now you learn something. <laughs> and the more you know. The more you know. So, guys, don't forget to follow us on Twitter and Facebook. I was going through Twitter earlier looking at old notifications, and I just love all of our listeners. You guys are so fucking funny. I just kept laughing and Jeff's like, what's so funny? I'm like, don't worry about it. Just go away. <laughs> no, I love, I love, I love seeing you guys on Twitter. Our Twitter is at Tudor Know Her. Um, we're also on Facebook where we have conversations and today in Tudor history and also telling everybody to wish Garrett a happy birthday. Our Facebook is just Tudor. I hardly know her. And then also don't forget to rate and review. Yeah. Please. Welcome all new people yes listeners. I mean, everybody who's come over from everything tutor super glad to have new listeners thank you everything tutor for sharing some of our stuff it's really amazing sometimes that any of this happens so it's a fun community it really is i love my history nerds i love them so much oh that reminds me i did see something funny on twitter that i'm gonna try and relay <laughs> via podcast if that's possible oh you should also talk about you just got some new books too, didn't you? I did. There. I posted about it on Facebook. Well, you kind of posted the one you didn't get, the Utopia one. No, but I also wrote about that. I told about the other two. Oh. Um, I wanted to get Utopia by Thomas More. I just randomly found it on uh, at a bookstore at Half Price Books. I was so excited, and I wanted to get it so bad just because, like, to own Utopia. <laughs> But I just like couldn't justify it. I knew I'd never actually read it, and now I'm kind of regretting it. I wish I'd bought it just to have it in my house. I can't believe it. It's be gone. At I can. Time soon. I can. I can. I'm gonna go back and get it tomorrow. Okay. <laughs> I'm 90% serious. Um, but I also got a book called Elizabeth's Women, and another book called Young and Damned and Fair. Elizabeth's Women is about the women she grew up with, so. Her posse. Her 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 peeps. Um her <laughs> what's what's Taylor Swift call her her lackeys? Minions? No. <laughs> I don't know. Mm, I'm sorry, I don't follow T Swift enough. Something her shit, what do they have? Guys, if you remember what T Swift calls her her lackeys. Swifters. 
Do <laughs> <laughs> you guys remember what she calls those? It's like her best friends, and they all hang out in a group. And it's Swifties. Like 30 of them. No, it's not actually her fans. It's like the people she just uh, hangs out get with. Get Swifty. Let's get Swifty. T- tweet tweet me at Tudor Know Her <laughs> if you know where <laughs> please she answer, calls Please her. answer me because we really yes. don't know. Um, no, Elizabeth's Women is about the women who impacted her life. So it talks a little bit about the few years she had with her mother and the woman who essentially raised her, Kat Astley, and um, obviously a couple more. So I'm really excited about that one. And I also got Young and Damned and Fair, and that one's all about Catherine Howard, and I'm really excited to read that one. I've been seeing it all over. So um, that's it. Oh, wait, unless you guys want me to see the Henry VIII thing, or read the Henry VIII thing I was reading. Somebody I follow on Twitter um, – their handle is at Nathan Amin. I'm really sorry if I butchered that. At N A T H E N A M I N. Um, he was on Facebook and he screenshotted somebody who had left a comment that said Henry VIII shouldn't have been born. Then his even more odious son wouldn't have been either. And somebody replied to replied with hope that usurper is roasting in hell and i just love that someone is so angry about this 500 years later (laughs) so i love history and fans they're they're just so passionate and wonderful (laughs) um that's it i think yeah i think it's all so until next time anything else to update about yeah hopefully we'll have garrett back next week we'll have garrett back next week We'll drive to South Bend and do a surprise South Bend episode so that beeping will be everywhere. Be live. <laughs> live from South Bend. It's the annoying beeping. Beep. So until next time, guys. Till next time. Divorce, divorce beheaded, beheaded died. died. Divorce, divorce beheaded, beheaded survived. survived. Goodbye. Goodbye.